in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. That's a line that Benjamin Franklin penned back in 1789, and well, folks, it's 2025, and I think it's time for an upgrade. We're going to say death, taxes, and power bills. Hey, everyone. Matt from Lawrence Systems here, and in today's video, I'm going to check out a couple of different power meters. I'm going to use them against some of the items here in my workspace, and we're going to find out if one has any advantages over the other. Let's get started. <laughs> Power usage can sneak up on you quickly, especially when working on projects involving new hardware. I've been using a power meter from Brightdea for about two months now. It can measure wattage, voltage, current, frequency, power factor, culminative time, and electricity consumption. It does what the kilowatt does, and Tom and I were curious to see how much of a functional difference exists between the two. I needed to get my hands on a kilowatt power meter, so I headed over to Micro Center. I picked up the kilowatt, a RAM upgrade for my daily PC, and some astronaut ice cream. I also browse as usual to see what's new. There's Apple savings going on all month long and Priority Care Plus providing you with peace of mind for all your devices no matter where you purchase them from. Sign up for Priority Care Plus and have unlimited access to Micro Center's tech experts and free diagnostics. There's more information in the description below. If you're on the West Coast, keep an eye out for the Santa Clara location opening soon. All right, I've got my kilowatt and my astronaut ice cream. Let's get going. I have my PC out from under my desk for the RAM upgrade and a quick dusting, so I attached it to each power meter to see how much it pulls at boot. The kilowatt peaked at 142 watts, but remained mostly between 70 and 80. The HEM01 remained at 58.7 watts for the entire boot process. I gotta tell you, I assumed that my machine pulled more. Of course, this number is just the system booting and there's no real workload, but I still expected the number to be well over 100 watts and to sustain a rate of about that. Next, I decided to try my Bamboo A1 mini printer. This printer performs well for me even in the cooler months when it's a little bit harder to keep the plate and nozzle at the correct temperatures, and I was curious to see how much power it uses when idle versus when it's heating the build plate. The kilowatt uh, pulled at about 5 watts at rest, which isn't too far from the HEM01, and they both were in the range of 115 to 120 watts when heating the build plate. Not as much as I expected. My larger printers pull considerably more power, but they have much larger heat beds, so that makes perfect sense. I tend to defer to this printer because of speed, and now if I can get a larger print to fit on it by repositioning it a little bit and still get quality, I'm gonna make it work, simply because it's using so much less power. I have a bunch of specimen tanks around my home, like the small aquarium you see behind me in videos, and I've accumulated a bunch of these LED fixtures over the years. They bring out beautiful colors in my plants and the aquatic life, and uh, they perform much better than fixtures that are rated for just five fewer watts. And to be honest, I've always wondered if these pull at the 20 watts they're listed at, so I decided to take a look. A couple of watts more than what they're rated for, and I'm sure that's because of the controller for the Bluetooth receiver, the LED controller, and other components that are technically always on if it's plugged into a power source. I'm a little surprised to see the zero watt rating on both of the devices when the light was in its off state, as again, it would still have to be drawing a small amount of power for Bluetooth and even just the LED on the power connector. The last item I decided to try these new power meters against was my MicroLab. There's a link to that project below, you should check it out. Right now, my MicroLab contains two Raspberry Pi 4s, two SSDs, a PoE switch, a Zigbee antenna, and two 5-volt Noctua fans. I was really happy to see that both of the power meters registered about 15 watts consumption total, and uh, it makes perfect sense because a Raspberry Pi does not take more than a couple of watts to power, and there really isn't a whole lot going on in the MicroLab. But given that my switch is rated for something like 65 watts of draw, that means there's plenty of room for activities. So I'm going to take my third Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm going to take the Pi 5 from the previous start page video, and I'm going to upgrade the MicroLab, and we're probably going to figure out some videos related to clustering or Docker Swarm or something like that in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Here we are at the end of the video, and it's time for some final impressions. Is one power meter that we looked at today significantly better than the other? I'd have to say no. From a functional standpoint, they both do exactly what they need to do, and, well, there are some form factor differences here that could help make a decision one versus the other. For example, the Bry idea does have two outlets and a really handy power cord. I don't know how I feel about the two outlets. I didn't have a need for two, but maybe you do. The kilowatt, on the other hand, only does have one outlet and no power cord. I thought that was going to be a bit of an inconvenience, but it turned out to actually be a little bit more maneuverable than the Bry idea. 
In addition, this is ETL certified where the bra idea is not. And that gives me a little more confidence in this product. So if I had to make a choice between the two, I would go with the kilowatt. Now, if you have a power meter that you use in your home lab or in your home that you'd like to share with everyone, please do so in the comments or jump into our Discord. We're always having great conversations there. Now, I've got to get some, <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of stuff I made a mess with in here today and yesterday putting this together. So uh, it's time for me to clean up a little bit for the next video. And until I see you, have a good one.